I'm Noah Myers, and uh, I suffered through depression uh, for, uh, I guess, about a year. It was uh, really bad. I stopped talking to people. I stopped going to work. I guess when I say stop going to work, I signed up for what's called FMLA because I had gone to uh, just my regular family doctor and he uh, decided that the best way to treat what I thought I was feeling was to pump a bunch of pills into me and had put me on two, three different medicines. After starting those medicines, I uh, shut everyone out of my life, family, friends, um, signed up for FMLA at work so that if there was a morning where I woke up and I just decided I didn't want to deal with my day, I didn't have to. And I would call my boss and tell him that I wasn't coming in. Um, which at the time I thought would help me so that I wouldn't have to deal with what I was feeling, but in hindsight realized that it was more of a hindrance because instead of facing what was going on, I was just hiding from it. So um, as far as symptoms, it was really, um, just severe, uh, I guess, being a recluse. I didn't want to deal with anyone or talk to anyone or deal with anything in my life. My uh, sister and her little girl, uh, she was six months old, had, uh, we had all moved in together. Uh, my sister was having some trouble, so um, I wanted to be able to help out. I think I, I took on a bit too much and I wasn't able to come to terms with that because we had, you know, after a couple months become financially dependent on each other and um, and it started to go downhill for me then because uh, I started to feel like uh, I, I couldn't get through day to day with the life that I was living. I felt like I was going to work just to make money to come home to pay my bills and have to, you know, live my life like that. And I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't deal with it anymore. I really hit uh, rock bottom when uh, I started to form a plan to commit suicide. Um, in my head, because I had financially just strapped myself, um, knowing that I had life insurance, figured I was worth more dead than I was alive. So uh, I had started to put together some plans to make it look like an accident, but I am not really the brightest crayon on the box. So uh, after a couple months of doing that, I finally turned to my mom and let her know that I was not as I used to be. I think for a while my sister felt like it was sort of her fault, um, but it wasn't, it never was, it was my fault. Uh, I don't, I mean, when I told my mom, you know, obviously she was, she was really upset and she is the one that took me to the hospital to, to talk to someone, but I don't know, they never really voiced out loud. Uh, how it made them feel. I think they were more afraid of what I was feeling as opposed to what they were feeling. So, um, I mean, I know that my family loves me. And like I said, I, I never wanted my sister to feel like any of it was her fault. I just took on too much and didn't know how to get myself out of what, you know, what I had buried myself under. Once I realized that uh, that committing suicide was not going to fix what I was feeling, that you know it would just make things worse, um, I, I called my mom and uh, and I told her, and she took me to a hospital here in the St. Charles area. And uh, I didn't use medicine. I didn't see a therapist. I sold all of my belongings. And I packed up myself, my dog, and one of my good friends and moved to Oregon. Uh, made it about three weeks. And it was that drive across the country and back that made me realize that running from 
uh, everything that I was unhappy with wasn't going to help make things better. Uh, I knew what I wanted with my life and I just had steered so far from it that I didn't know how to get back. And so um, it wasn't about Oregon, it was just about getting out of the situation that I was stuck in. It's, it's scary and it's really easy to think that no one else is gonna understand how you're feeling. And it's really easy to disappear into yourself and not want to share what's happening with other people. Um, but the easiest thing for you to do is to talk to other people about it because there are gonna be tons of people that have either gone through what you're going through or have experienced something very similar. Find something in your life that is going to make things better because there's always gonna be something. When you really look at what normalcy is, there's, there is no normal. You just live your life the way that you think is best for you and if other people don't like it, then oh well. portrayed depression very, very well. Um, I cried a lot. I tried to mask it, but uh, it definitely, definitely struck a nerve, a nerve with me. A lot of the stuff that she said about, uh, I guess, people not knowing her and, you know, not being able to even pick her head up in the morning, uh, I struggled with that a lot. You know, I went through a phase where it just seemed like no one knew me either, so. Sometimes it's just nice to hear that other people struggle with the same thing. It was a great show, had a great message because that's something, you know, mental illness is not something to be taken lightly and it's nice that, you know, the show was able to put light on it and in a positive way and show, you know, how it does affect people. Uh, so if it is something that you or someone you know has struggled with, it's definitely a good show uh, to, to check out.